Prompt engineering, whenever you're working with ChatGPT or another large language model, it's all about the prompt. You construct this prompt and you tell it specifically what you want it to do. I use prompt engineering all the time with code. Like one of the most basic things that I do is I will write a prompt that generates the code that I want. And then ChatGPT may or may not actually get it right. If it doesn't get it right, you can tell it what was wrong with what it generated and it will fix it. But I like to really capture my prompts for the code that I generated. I will usually try to modify my original prompt to make it work better so that I don't have to give it subsequent prompts to tell it what to do, to tell it how to fix it. For example, in PyTorch, you can extend the class and module to create a neural network. That's a more heavyweight way to do it, or you can just use a sequence. I find that a lot of times ChatGPT, if you don't tell it which of these two methods you want, it'll just kind of randomly pick one. And it may not be the best for the case that I'm looking for. So I will usually try to explicitly tell it and use a sequence or use a class if that's what I want it to do. I put in some information here just basically telling you why the prompt engineering matters. Quality control definitely it lets you it lets you control the overall quality of the model rather than having to give it a bunch of subsequent prompts to, to refine. Cost efficiency, just as you, as you get better and better prompts, it's just simply going to perform better. And then you can mitigate some of the bias in here, in particular if case bias is just where, given something that it just does not know, what is it going to tend towards? Famous examples of this have been more with stable diffusion. If you ask it to for a doctor, it will typically give you a male. If you ask it for a nurse, it will typically give you a female. If you tell it, please give me a female doctor, then you mitigate that bias and you get more what you were looking for. You can also specify the race of the doctor if you're looking for something very specific for what you are trying to do. Maybe you're specifying different races as you're generating artwork that you're going to use in ChatGPT. That's a great way to to include diversity in what you're working for. Because if you if you don't tell it, it's it's simply going to interject its own ideas, which are its bias. I find in code generation, prompt engineering is very, very important. If you think about it, at, you, you can't generate an entire program with ChatGPT. You're going to generate individual little pieces of it and bring it together. If you're not imposing some standardization on this, it can often create code that is not compatible. For example, I will see it sometimes called a loss function, a loss function, loss FN, or sometimes it'll call it a criterion, both of which are correct. But if you're not giving a very specific examples, it's going to generate code that if the first part, it was calling a loss function, the second part criterion, then the code may not be completely compatible. Similar, you may want to tell it actually which activation functions to use. Otherwise, it will, it will largely choose. Overall, my strategy for prompt engineering is to take the individual prompts, see if it, see how close that gets me to what I want to do, and try it multiple times because this is generative AI. The results are, are somewhat random. And then refine your original prompt and make sure that it consistently gives you what you're expecting and what you want. So thank you for watching the video. And if this was useful, please give me a like, please subscribe so that you can see the rest of the course as we put prompt engineering to use on some of these large language models that we'll be working with. Thank you for watching.